today? I'm good. How are you, Gina? I am so good. Thank you so much for coming on my uh, I Love Learning podcast. So why don't you tell everyone who you are and tell us what you're passionate about? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Um, basically, um, a little bit about me. I grew up in Fall River, Massachusetts. Um, to a, you know parents that weren't educated. Mm -hmm. um, and I struggled for years, um, but I, I put myself through college mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just kind of worked up that ladder trying to improve myself and get educated um, and just be a better person, a better version of who I could be. And, and kind of, sh I just wanted to prove to my parents that, you know, um, I had four of the brothers. One of us was going to you know, make them proud at least, if not all of us. But, um, and, and so, you know, I um, went to school and then obviously after that, we got uh, started in my jobs and I was at US Airways for about seven years, mm -hmm. pretty much a supervisor there, a trainer. Um, then I went into law, got my paralegal degree. I was in a law firm for a while did some uh, freelance stuff. So I have the legal background. So I have aviation background, legal background. Um, and oddly enough, I drove truck for about seven years. I actually was going to go to school to drive a truck 20 years prior, but it fell through. Mm -hmm. So I ended up coming back to it later on. Um, so with my background um, that I had already and being in the trucking industry, uh, I drove truck for about six to seven years, and then I started break into break into the. Um, I wanted to be a safety director, so I wanted to teach. I wanted to show others, um, you know, a better way, trucking, whatever it was. Um, I just wanted to help other people, and so um, I got my first safety director job about four years ago now, mm -hmm. um, and then transitioned over to J.P. Noonan, January of 2022. Probably one of the best decisions I ever made. One of the best places to work. I'm not just saying that. Um, they treat me really well. And I have about 350 truck drivers, about 500 employees total mm -hmm. um, that I'm responsible for, for credentials, for training, for myriad of things, uh, compliance. But I think the best part of my job, or one of the best parts of my job is training. Is, mm -hmm. is showing other people how to do things safely, do things correctly, and go home at the end of the day to see their family. Got it. So that's really interesting. So you came from a family, I'm similar, no college background, no. and you went in and you wanted to learn. So mm -hmm. what are you really passionate about then? It sounds like you've had a lot of different experiences. Where does that passion and that drive for learning come from, you think? I've always, I've always wanted to learn. I don't know if for some reason I feel like it's, it's always been in me. Um, when I was younger, I used to try to take apart my bike, and uh, if I couldn't get it back together. I would scream and throw oh. stuff on the ground and take a tantrum because I had to do it. I had to do it right. Oh. I had to, I had to do it fast. Um, I've always had this drive. My mother always said I had this drive that just I always wanted to do better. I used to sit, this is kind of funny, I used to sit in my my in the passenger seat of my with my mom. We'd go driving somewhere and I I'd ask her a hundred questions. Well, why? Why this? But how that? But because what do you mean? You know, and, and she would get to a point where she just taught me to shut it up. But I was always driven to learn, to understand, to know my what was around me how Got things it. worked. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always inquisitive. I was always hungry to know why and what and who and just what made things work around me, what made things tick. So yeah. I've always had a, had a drive to learn. Mm -hmm. And so here I am. <laughs> yeah, well, I love that. So where do you think that driver, that inspiration to learn comes from? Do you think that like that was something like it was just inside you or was there somebody or where does that come from? What inspires you to learn? Like, where did that come from? You just woke, you know, was born and you just were asking why and why and why, or 
Where do you think? I, I think it was an eight, but I also think that, you know, at a, at a point I came to a realization that um, living in poverty, which basically my parents weren't educated, you know, I, I didn't have it the worst, but I didn't have it the best either. Um, mm -hmm. it, it was a tough, it was a tough childhood. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I, I always knew there was better. I know I always knew I, we could do better. We could strive for more. You know, I knew at some point, you know what you know. And it's like that I could be there. I could be doing this. I could have that. And it wasn't just more about material possessions. I think what drives me is almost like a, a justice for equality for people mm -hmm. because I know that people t take an advantage of, especially with my legal background. A lot of people <laughs> would come to me. A lot of people would come to me and say, you know, I'm going through this or my, my landlord's evicting me or this person's doing this to me and could you help me? So I helped a lot of people, not with legal advice, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I helped a lot of people kind of navigate stuff so that they could find justice in their situation. Awesome. A, a situation that was injustice became, you know, they, they found justice. They found their justice. They, they made the wrong right. And, and it just is a, it's a great feeling to help people, you know, who are being taken advantage of or in, in certain situations prevail. In, yes, in I in love that. Place. You have the mind of a champion, Kyle. I just wrote this yeah. article and what you just described is somebody that can come from like maybe the worst situation ever, maybe not having a lot and coming out ahead. And I love that. I love that you have a mind of a champion. See, I learned something about you today. That's Thank awesome. You. Yeah. So tell us, so you you talked about schools and struggle in school, and so you probably have a lot of um, insight and in what you think really engages somebody in a learning experience. So what does if you were to compare, like you said, education is boring, learning might be boring, but how do you create an experience that engages learners? Because you do that right now at JP Noonan, I know you right. do. Well, thankfully, we and I'm not just saying this. Uh, I finally found your platform, which is ah, uh, that was the plug. I didn't, I didn't plant that. No, no, it's it's it's. I you know I've been through other platforms, and your platform really helps the learner learn. Like I've already gotten compliments from. I mean, all of my drivers that have taken it love it. Uh, people from outside the organization who I've shared some of the materials with love it. Um, and they just see it like a, a fresh, articulated way to learn fresh, crisp, like explanations and pictures and, and methods that just make it stuff real. It makes, mm -hmm. makes it come to life. It makes it personal for them. Like, you know, then they see JP Noonan trucks and JP Noonan drivers and specific things that are on our trailers or on our trucks or, you know, we deal with with our customers. It, it just personalizes the experience. It makes it personal to them to say, you know, it's not just some guy down south talking about some obscure truck on a on a parking lot. You know, that has nothing to do with them. <laughs> right. It's something that actually happens mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. at J.P. Noonan with our equipment, with our people. So and, you know, I got them to buy in, too. It's you know, I showed them the platform. I showed them how it could work. I showed them how they could benefit and 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 they bought in they loved it so yeah so what do you think Kyle? what do you think how really authentic learning looks like because what you're really talking about you mentioned real um you use some key words but if someone were to ask you that like what is authentic learning what is that for you because you know you've described situations in your learning story that maybe weren't authentic so what makes it authentic i think just making it personal, mm -hmm. just making it relevant, mm -hmm. showing them how it fits with them and not mm -hmm. just in general, but how it fits with them, each group, each, each certain driver with a certain truck, with a certain commodity and, and how it works specifically for them to bring it down to a, a certain personalization level versus just some platform that you just throw out there and say, hey, you, they'd get this done by Friday. Get this done by, by next month. Mm -hmm. um, it, it takes more time and effort, but it's it's worth it. Anything that's worth investing in, it, you know, at the end of the day, is going to work. 
and, and you've got to invest though. You got to yeah. put your heart into it. You got to put thought into it. You got to really invest in it. And once they know that you invested and you care mm -hmm. and you care, mm -hmm. then they'll, they'll pick it up. Cause if it cares, if you, if they, if you care about it, then, then they'll end up caring about it. But I if they love know that. that you don't care about it, they know that you don't care about it and, and it's just being thrown at them. They're going to treat it the same way. They, yes. they watch you. Yeah, definitely. Oh. Definitely. I mean, you invest in your, your employees, you invest in people around you, right? It makes a difference and it makes a difference in their learning. Has there ever been a time in your life that you've like learned something that really left an impact on you and who you are today? Cause you, you and I talked before you've had a lot of different experiences where you've been a yeah. trainer and you've trained people. What, what has really influenced your learning and who you are today? You know, honestly, I, I think the legal background really opened my eyes to a lot of things in life. There's a different, whole different perspective because when you just go to school and you learn something to do something, that's one thing. But when you go to school for law, you learn almost every perspective of life versus just that one perspective you may have learned in school. Hmm. You learn it from the plaintiff side. You learn it from the defendant side. You learn it from the, the judge's side, from the public side. Because if you get a jury, you're going to have a public. Sorry about that. That's all right. You're important, Kyle. You're, you're important. going to have a jury of your peers. You're going to have a judge up there, you know, running the courtroom. You're going to have the plaintiff who has their opinion and their version. And the defendant who has their version. Um so it's almost like you, you get a broader sense of, of life, how mm -hmm. things work. Um, and it just opens up, opens things up to, to bigger possibilities because yes. you, you, now you can see 3d, 4d versus just that flat image. Right. So it's like really working with learners to understand what you're talking about from different right. perspectives, right? Like not right. just your perspective, but how does other people see that? That's a really huge insight to have. It's such, you yep. know, early in your career. That's, that's outstanding. And I was a truck driver. So it's when I talk to a truck driver, I'm not saying mm -hmm. something that I haven't done. Right. I have like, sweat equity. I've done, I've done it. I've, I've been behind the wheel. I've pumped off chemical loads. Wow. I've driven all around the country, up in Canada. Mm -hmm. So when I speak, I speak not just from knowledge about mm -hmm. the industry and what's right and wrong, what, you know, what, what has to take place and what doesn't, but actually doing the job. I, I've done, a pre, I've done a, hundreds of pre-trips. I've wow. done, you know, loading, unloading. I've done everything. So I think that's mm -hmm. where my uh, director of human resources said I have the street cred because Got it. I, I've done it. Uh -huh. But I also have a legal background to research the legal requirements of the industry and the compliance side. So I wear a lot of hats, but I love them all. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely having experience brings that expertise that you can really yep. build credibility with your learners for sure. Yep. Has there? Let me ask you this, Kyle. Has there ever been a time? And you, this is a two-choice question. Either you've had an impact on someone to overcome a learning hurdle. Maybe there's someone in your life or your experience of work that you've really helped overcome a challenge, or maybe there you've overcome a learning hurdle yourself that you want to share with everyone where you thought maybe it was something impossible, but you overcame that. Can you, and you have the mind of a champion. So I'm sure there's something in there that you can, you can share. Um, well, up to the time I, went for my paralegal degree, I really hadn't had a lot of college. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, and not coming from a background of anyone that has gone to college or first, you know, first generation college. Um, I really didn't want to do it. I didn't, I thought I was going to fail. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to expect. But I think just go, getting into it, finding what my resources were, and what tools I could get uh, to help me, and just doing it, just, mm -hmm. just do it. And that's, I think that's the big thing is a lot of people shy away because that what they're thinking is not actually, actually what they're able to do. And mm. they could be shut down just by their mind. Oh, I can't do mm -hmm. it. I'll just stop here. No, mm -hmm. you got to forget what your mind's thinking and just change it and say, I can do it and find the way to do it. And then once you succeed that first step, 
-hmm. each step after that just comes mm -hmm. because you, you you gotta you gotta take that first step definitely have to take so, that first step i love that do you what kind of tools kyle did you use what what would what kind of resources did you use to change your mindset can you remember i mean um yeah finding finding other students in class that wanted to study finding uh, professors who could give me extra time to explain certain things if i had questions um you know finding transportation to get to and from you know some of the hurdles to get to college and then some of the hurdles while you're in college mm -hmm. um and just finding answers to each thing that would hold me back and once i could settle everything that would hold me back it was just forward from there God, that's amazing that's amazing all right kyle i have one i have one more question i want to leave the audience with if there's someone out there watching our show today that's feeling uninspired or maybe maybe they've lost their direction and they don't really know where to go from here they've lost their energy to learn what would you tell them what would you what would you say to that person out there today i would say pick pick one thing that you love to do and head in that direction find a book find a you know a class find something and it's you know not it doesn't necessarily have to be you know I, I want to be an engineer. It could be something small. Start somewhere. Find something that you love. Start it. Mm -hmm. And stick with it. Give it a chance. Give it 30 days, 90 days, and just stick it out. And it'll change. It'll change your whole perspective because you don't know until you know. So you need to get past that that point in order to, to see what's beyond it. And once you see what's beyond it, you'll want to keep going. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Kyle. I just got goosebumps. Kyle Burns from JP Noonan with us today. We appreciate you being on our show. Kyle so we had one more thing. Inspiration. Yeah, what do you want to share? I wrote something down. Yeah, and this right, is, this, this is important to me. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Aw, uh, I love that. I just wanted to leave everyone that because it's 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 extremely important. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We all care and caring is the yep. most important thing. And I know Kyle cares about all his learners out there. So reach out to him, connect with them. Thank you, Kyle, for being on our show today. We appreciate you and thanks Thank for you all for you do. Me. You bet.